Welcome back everybody and thank you for rejoining me here in Hearts of Iron 4 using the Darkest Hour mod in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Adolf. Oh! Adolf! Um, but so far not been demonetized at the time of recording, but you never know. But we're meeting with the SA in the Reichswehr leadership an attempt to settle the ongoing conflict between the Reichswehr and the Stubabteilung. The Big Daddy and the Defense Minister, Van von Blamberg, have arranged a meeting with the leadership of the Stubabteilung, the Double uh, S, and the Reichswehr. Although the contents of the meeting aren't entirely known to the outside, it, one thing is very clear. Is that the primary reason for this meeting was to make clear of what the hierarchy for the German military was and which branch of supremacy over the other. The meeting has been considered by many as a victory for the Reichswehr, but simply that Rome can prove himself, standing up to even the blessings of his master. Whatever the case, this shall serve as a precedent of the relationship between the SA and the Reichswehr. The SA will become an auxiliary force and a discussion. The SA has called outlived its usefulness and has to be put down to rest. I won't take instructions from the ridiculous corporal. So this is alternate history, which is really cool, but what is this one? Kraft Dorsch Freude. Ah, Kraft Dorsch Freude, F D K D F. For sure, it has been set up to show the advantages of national daddyism to people and bring the gap between the classes. They have attempted to accomplish these goals by providing a variety of affordable and enjoyable activities that were previously inaccessible to the common German. These activities range from concrete plays, or concerts and plays, to day trips, holidays, and even cruises. The organization has also attempted to end the Germany to foreign tourists, which has provided a much needed boost to the tourism industry. These activities, however, wouldn't be possible without the dedicated workers, who are rewarded generously for the efforts by the organization in the form of trips with their families to movies, parks, hikes, concerts, and recreational clubs. These activities have made the German people happier and more content, while also teaching them the benefits of national daddyism. This, in the long run, will prove immensely important, as times will undoubtedly get tough, and their loyalty to us will be essential if we are to get through them and succeed. The KDA has proven its worth, as we're doing Reichsmarine, as we did read a last time. So if you read that again, please go ahead, it's quite a bit of read, but we do want to establish the Big Daddy Macht, uh, the Wehrmacht. Um, but I did ask you guys whether we should do commence rearmament yesterday, or build up the economic base, but we're going to go with the Volks about Fart first. Uh, construction speed's not bad. I don't want to record some goods, though. Privatization? How many civvies do we have? Uh, you know what? I think we're in a good spot. We can go in and do that anyways. We don't make a lot of money, unfortunately, but... Then again, that's like real life for me. Uh, the Weimar Republic. <clears throat> and one of its many mistakes. Maintain. Oh, look at that. I have a vast array of state-owned companies, social services, and unreasonable subsidies that have vastly hemorrhaged government resources. This was exacerbated by state-owned companies, whose mounting debt was too unbearable that we had to divert scarce tax revenues towards repaying such debt instead of solving the economic crisis that has plagued our nation as part of their first policies in tackling the economic crisis. We shall embark on a massive privatization program selling company assets to prospective businessmen throughout the Reich. We'll also adopt the policy of austerity, or tighten belts in layman's terms, to ensure that the Reich can weather the storm that has plagued Germany for years. It may be unpopular, but we can assure our citizens that the Reich will become stronger than ever before. Lose a little bit of stability and lose two cities, which is really not very popular with me, but... Oh well! Ah, uh, let's take a look see, shall we? What else do we have here, my friends? Ah, privatization and austerity. Love it. Love it. Ah, close out of the interest, close out of that, close out of that, close out of that. As we're still putting our roads up, and oh, bills are due. If not selected, we get a six month extension, it costs us a little more political power. Um, which is honestly fine. We'll repay them after the war, of course, is over. Let's do that too. Ah, so. I did ask you guys yesterday which one of these two we should do, and overall, the time of this recording, there is more support for... Build out the economic base. A strong economic base will be essential for Germany in the coming years and will be the foundation for all the great things that are built upon it. If we, if it were weak, like it currently is, the massive army, navy, and air force that we were planning to produce would be impossible to maintain, let alone pay for. Once this foundation is strengthened sufficiently, not only would our plans for the military be able to come to fruition, further economic development will become easier to obtain, which will benefit not just us, but the German people as well. Because we're always doing this for people. Schleicher criticizes the cabinet. With the growing tensions between the Reichswehr and the SA, many begin to voice their concerns over the growing rift between the two and the government's inability to mend the rift and keep the nation's own armed forces under control. The most prominent of these critics is Kurt von Schleicher. A former general and chancellor of Germany, Schleicher has criticized our administration's ineffective attempts to mediate the conflict and how the SA now appears to be operating independently from the very party that created it. Furthermore, he warns that if something is not done soon, tensions will reach to a critical point and one cell will raise their arms against the other, threatening the stability of the already fragile nation not long after these criticisms reach the ears of our big daddy. Some of them in government have proposed a cabinet reorganization, one that will be more capable of dealing with the current crisis. The changes proposed include Schleicher himself occupying the position of Vice-Chancellor, Rome being appointed the Minister of Defense, Heinrich Brüning as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Gregor Strasser being the Minister of National Economy. While the inclusion of these individuals will appease SA and put us in a better position to negotiate with them, some fear Rome's political missions can claim that empowering him would only put it a greater risk of being overthrown. Don't mind the incompetent minister. Ooh, actually we do this one too. We get spent all that money we just got. Hurt unemployment, which is good, and get another civvy. 
Ooh, is there anything else we can spend money on? They really care about? Not too much. I'll take a full two months to do, which is kind of a uh, kind of crazy. But better with economic base, and then politicize autarky. Well, we still need to do Volksvelfart because we can't do any of this stuff yet. So, and we can't do this one either. So, during the early days of the German Empire, they have embarked on a massive welfare policy by giving workers fair salary, equal rights, and pristine working conditions, at least compared to other nations. We were the first nation that truly called the welfare state, ensuring that the government's obligation to citizens welfare is met with the highest standards. But such achievement crumbled when we lost the Valkyrie, when our economy went bust, fueled by rapid inflation and high unemployment. To help our suffering citizens, we should create the Volksvelfart, a national daddyist. Oh, look at that. Um, <clears throat> uh, National Daddy's People Welfare Organization. This whole agency is responsible for overseeing our own version of the welfare state, modeled after Bismarck's policies while adapting them to the changing times of the Reich. <coughs> Control the Gestapo transfer to Mr. This guy named Henrik. Heinrich! With the internal rivalry and friction between, brewing between the Reichswehr and the Stabauteilung, there has been another faction that remained in the shadows for a while, the Schutzstaffel. Born as the nation's most elite troops, the Schutzstaffel has grown in province over recent years, garnering roles and positions in almost every sector of our nation, with its responsibilities no longer limited to merely protection for the Fuhrer and the rest of the High Command. However, the Schutzstaffel has become increasingly apparent of the political situation in the Reich, with Ernst Röhm and the Stabauteilung stirring up instability and rest with the Fatherland, with some of them predicting a potential coup d'etat on the horizon. As such, as SS is special to Goring, the leader of the Gestapo, to relinquish his power and authority and take and place Heinrich Himmler as the leader of the Gestapo. This act has definitely sparked fears in the Reich, with the fragile balance of power between the Reichswehr and the Schwab Thailand already under threat from the rising Schutzstaffel. A security measure in these uncertain times. If we do what we must. I wish we had more money. Yeah. Total income. Oh, it's actually 55. That's not bad. Uh, I'm spending most on used military factories, but you know what? We gotta spend money. To make money and get what we want. The Federal State of Austria. After the Substaltschaltung des Parliaments uh, and the foundation of the Fatherland Front, the now authoritarian nature of the Austrian governance has been self evident. But seemingly, to officialize the country's transformation from a democracy to an authoritarian regime, the official state of the country has been changed to the Federal State of Austria, a Bundesstaat Österreich, and the local tongue. The Federal State of Austria, colloquially being called the Standestat, corporate state, becomes the seemingly important role that estates and corporations will play in the Austrian society, at least according to the Chancellor Engelbert Dolfus, who has been the single most important driving force that has led to the current state of affairs in Austria. The Federal State is a continuation of the First Austrian Republic as a one-party state being led by the uh, clerical fascist Fatherland Front, the Standestat. Concept derived from the notion of Stande, estates or corporations, as advocated by leading regime politicians such as Engelbert Dolfus and Kurt Schuschnigg. Uh, the result is an authoritarian government based on a mix of Italian fascism and conservative Catholic influences. I knew it's living for Austria. For now. Ah, uh, this autarky. Yes. Since our seizure of power from the Weimar Republic, the world has seen our nation under a dark lie with foreign relationships troublesome at best. Not only that, the Weimar Republic has built our economy under foreign dependency, dependency forcing us to follow the whims of multinational conglomerates to seek to exploit our nation for the benefits of their nation's growth and government. We cannot allow uh, the destructive act anymore, and as such, we shall make autarky or self sufficiency as our national policy, promoting it at every opportunity until we can truly make legislation regarding it. Isolation may weaken us, but foreign influence will destroy us. Cold look of faction would be very nice. We need money for that one, too. That's actually very nice. German employment achieves by 5% acts add a mixed economy. Oh. Uh, plan a potentiary of the four-year plan. Herman Goring will be available as economic minister. Consumer goods goes up by 10%. Oh, God, that's not good. More construction speed. Oh, God. I want cold liquefaction first. Giddy up Vagen would not be bad, though. Oh, 70-day focus. Oh, my goodness. Cold liquefaction. In 1913, Friedrich uh, Burgess discovered a process to turn coal into liquid hydrocarbons, which could then be further used for refining the intrapetrochemical. We need to invest in these signal techniques, as importing crude oil might be impossible once war breaks out. We lose money by getting two synthetic refineries, more fuel, more rubber, what's not the love. Especially as we're just building ourselves up anyways. As much as possible. Pop in of a second revolution. Oh boy. Um, in the meantime, we also want to keep an eye on this too, because we need money for that as well. Uh, money is doing okay though. Idea about it, that's nice. With the Schutzstaffel, the Rxwehr, and the Stubb Tiling locked in a power struggle, the highest echelons of Berlin have noticed, loud and clear. All of them have the same mindset. The Fuhrer's ambition for the new Germany will be hindered and won't be re realized until these three organizations have been dealt with. However, they are all silent. Keeping their mouths shut as they fear they'll be the next victims by the secret conflict. Of course, silence was always meant to be broken as Fr Franz von Papen, the vice chancellor of the German Reich, has shown no restraint in expressing his profound opposition to the Stubb Tiling, and it's wrong, calling them instigators to a second revolution that will supposedly correct the failures of our Fuhrer's policies of recruiting Germany to a powerful state. However, Papen deviated from his speech, spewing out anti government propaganda and the reinstatement of civil, civil liberties, eventually bringing it to censorship by Joseph Goebbels. Nevertheless, 
My Papa's speech is a warning call to Berlin's influential elite and the fear himself. While Papa may have spewed out propaganda, he still has a point. The Stubbop Talon has grown in power and strength, and the fear must take a uh, stand immediately, lest he wake up one morning and face his persecution by Rum himself. He speaks the truth. Colibri has been launched. Beautiful. Um, so Special Forces, 1934. There's not much we can do. Uh, oh, enables a gun. That's not bad. I like how you get guns from them anyways. Uh, anything for artillery, 1935. Another year away. Tank-wise, we are looking... Oh, we're looking okay. Motorized, sure. Counts a comp wagon. Well... I guess we might as well, right? <clears throat> we get good early mobilization. We lose 5% more political power, but we get 5% more consumer goods, which we do want. It hurts our ability to construct a military fac civilian factories, I should say, uh, which is what we really want. Honestly, we could probably make the ch change right now and still do okay. 5% um, more consumer goods means we can build more, build faster, right? So, And actually, you get 10% more research speed, which is actually really nice, and more factory output. You lose a little bit of stability, which does suck. Does it hurt the cost? Is inflation growth modifier negative fifteen percent? No. Oh, we actually just go all the way down here too. Oh, I'll try. Why not? So now we have ten, ten, ten. Nice. Oh, total income. Current balance. Oh, thirteen. Total income is fifty-six. Total expenses. Yeah, we need more money. Especially continue doing this, so. Um, self sufficiency. I do want this one, but that costs. We do have enough in total for all this stuff, but that's gonna be kind of getting very expensive. But we have to unterneme and collaborate. Rumors have circulated that various factions within the Reich, most especially the SAR, is dissatisfied with the rule of our Fuhrer Adolf Hitler and his attempts to improve the lives of the German people. They intend on organizing a revolution aiming to end the social harmony that has only existed for the first time since the end of the World War. Such acts of treason are not tolerated within the Reich and must be purged immediately with no exceptions, otherwise, our nation will see a civil war in its hands. We should mobilize the SS to SA facilities and personnel, executing them with no hesitation. And Strom will see us last night, the Night of the Long Knives. Another comment from yesterday was, a very nice mod. Uh, someone says, by the way, do you plan on playing Novosibirsk again after Kotaka releases for TNO? And I have to say, yes, of course I do. Uh, someone says, I should also play TNO Rotor Morgan first. Someone says, they censored it? They could have used a vanilla hoi for a German flag. Well, we haven't gotten to our swastika yet, so we'll get there. We will get there. I promise you that. We will get there. Build as many civvies as possible. I wonder if you could build so many civvies that you never have to worry about money again. Probably not, but... Also, we weren't building anything. We could get more money. Actually, how much? Hold on. So we do that. How far are we on this? Are we at zero? If we're literally at zero, I'm going to cancel that. So, unused civilian factories. We get seven monies. Right now, how many factories do we have not? You have three civilian factories. How many? Oh, we have 10 we're not using. We get a total of 7. It's worth it just probably just build it up. Just build it up, man. <coughs> but our ex-president Hindenburg is told. A German nation mourns today as one of his great national heroes has finally passed away. Paul von Hindenburg, age 86 years old, died from his long lasting lung cancer while at his home in New Dock, East Prussia. A universally loved war who beat back the Russians in the Great War and the Reich's president of the German Reich for the last 8 years, he faced one of the worst situations a leader could ever face following the recall of deaths after the Wall Street crash. Despite taking hold of a nation's shambles and chaos, he managed to hold the German nation together throughout, setting a clear civil war with level-headed decisions and love for his country, even though beginning to rebuild its economy through cooperation with multiple Reich's counselors. Despite his lung cancer due to deteriorating health, he performed his elegant duty to the nation to his last breath, something no man, no matter their political allegiance, can disrespect all Germans, and put down their weapons for one day to more than the, uh, one person who, no matter how your allegiance, could hold your head up high and call hero. Germany mourns a hero. Well, it just means we can have great opportunities for more now. Pratislau, Hanover, Newmark, Effort. Next. Oh wow, that costs even more this time. Um, unemployment is now 21%, which is actually really nice. Adolf Hitler proclaimed Big Daddy. The day it marked an event of unprecedented since the formation of the German Reich and since uh, the humiliating loss in the Great War. Today, the Chancellor of the Third Reich, Adolf Hitler, has decided to take even more responsibilities for running. Oh, look at that. Our nation and bringing it back from the darkest depth of degeneracy today is issued a decree which merged the offices of the Reich's president previously held by the now deceased Hindenburg and the Reich's Chancellor into one, the Führer and the Reich's Chancellor, better known as De Führer. The position is granted him immense power, but this power is needed in restoring the country to greatness. 
The fear himself is reminded of the Reichstag in that he is only doing this to save the German people from the excesses of Jewish vermin. To further legitimize these actions, he decided to hold a referendum on the matter, and unsurprisingly, the majority voted yes for the new policy. With the backing of the German people, the government, and Hitler himself, the office of the Führer has been created, a necessary sacrifice in the battle against the enemies of the Reich. We need a strong, capable leader to bring Germany from the darkest pits. Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer! The council. Why can't we do this one yet? You know. Oh, it requires. Oh, establish a Geheimer shot Oh, we didn't do this one yet. Um. Oops, my bad. As the Reich consolidates power in Germany, we must remember that radical organizations from the reactionaries to the committed revolutionaries, uh, communist revolutionaries, the enemies of the might have all want an end or newly bred rule. The Sierra Reich is a living embodiment of what they abhor, and so-called war mongering stance on foreign policies allowed our adversaries to invest heavily into these factions, hoping for an end to German revanchism. We cannot and will not allow such activities to hold a single stronghold, regardless of whether it be the most isolated pockets of our territories to Berlin itself, which I have heard this one before. We must establish a secret police. It's called the Gestapo to not only deal with the adversaries at home, but to influence foreign governments and abroad, paving the way for a smooth transition of power once uh, we reach their homelands. Also remember, but the Reich isn't some pushover that's easily unstable. On the contrary, our adversaries are everything that they would call us. Oh, so get more stability, more, way more patches popularity, remove destroyed German spirit. So 5% more stability, 20% more war support, add Rudolf Hess, get more political power. Um... Add totalitarian system, daily political power plus 10, more recruitable population, less stability, war support goes up by 10%. Get Fuhrerheid. Fuhrerheid. Look at this guy. Don't fly to, uh. I read this one last time, too. If you're going to be able to speak your head. Alright, right, Um, Don't fly to England for no reason. The path of Since Since our seizure of power from uh, the Weimar Republic. The world has seen our nation under a dark light, with foreign relationships troublesome at best. Not only that, the Weimar Republic has built our economy under foreign dependency, forcing us to follow the whims of multinational conglomerates who seek to exploit. Our nation for the benefit of the nation's government. We're going to allow this destructive act anymore, and as such, we should make all talk yourself sufficiently our national policy, promoting it at every opportunity until we make uh, legislation regarding it. I suggest you may weaken us, but foreign influences will destroy us. We already read that one. Fear ride. So we got even down here. Um, we lose 5% more political power, which I don't really want to do, even though 5% more consumer goods would be nice. Um, but that's what hurt everything else. So I think we're currently good where we're at. Two a day is really nice. That was a typical German summer day. The sky was unexpectedly clear above, with only a few specks of passing clouds that littered the blue sea above. While the, uh, the meanwhile, the sun shone brightly on the town below, and the rolling hills in the background created almost a picturesque vista for the occasion. And what occasion it was! Hundreds of young men gathered in and about the town square, lined up shoulder to shoulder, weapons in hand, and quiet as a church mouse. However, there's anything but silence in the streets. The sounds of beating drums, tooting trumpets, and horns filled the atmosphere while men's and papa's military regalia goose stepped up and down the main road. Leading to the square, sounds of townspeople watched the spectacle unfold. Yet it was not long until the morning or the marching stopped, and the last choked trumpet sound was heard, followed by a deathly silence. At the center of the square stands raised a rather large temporary wooden platform with just a few meters off the ground and adorned in flowers and decorated with an intermittent swastika clad red drapes, the national flag. As the dead air started to settle in after a minute, a man with an officer hat, jet black boots, and a tastefully made uniform decked with several medals stepped up to the platform and walks up to the edge of it, look, overlooking all of the men in formation before him. He takes a good look among the crowd, then he opens in his mouth. Let me be the first one to congratulate you on becoming capable men and true defenders of the fatherland, but before reviving, receiving your honors, I need you to pronounce an oath. An oath not to the decrepit Weimar Republic, but to a great Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler. So repeat after me, I swear to God, this is a secret oath to the leader of the German Empire and people Adolf Hitler, supreme commander of the armed forces. So it was that, during the late of summer of 33, the good men serving Germany abandoned their allegiance to the dying state of Weimar and set up their faith in the only man capable of leading Germany out of the downward spiral that had been created by those who wanted to destroy Germany, inwards and outwards. Whatever they may come from, and whomever they may be now, the Ver Ver Wehrmacht will be able to act as an extension of the Führer's will, and therefore the German people will crush enemies of the Reich. I shall at all times be prepared to give my life for this oath. Cool. I really don't want this guy here. Uh, we have enough political power for now to change him. Uh, small arms, that's not bad. Support equipment, that's not bad. Um, infrastructure, this guy, they. Corrupt kleptocrat. They almost have the exact same thing here. Construction speed would be bad. Arts of research, just a little bit. That armor's not bad, too. Resource efficiency gain. How is our resources right now? Uh, honestly, it wouldn't really benefit us that much. So, get rid of this guy. Honestly, I just want the construction speed. 5% is not much, but more output. Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> build, build, build. Current balance plus 9 a month. Oh god, it's not enough. And then we'll do this one next, too. And the comment says, Darn, you really like to play Germany! Yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't like playing Germany? Germany's a lot of fun. Germany is, like, the whole reason why we're doing this. Germany is a lot of fun times. A lot, a lot of fun times. Um, so, yeah, very nice, very nice, very nice. One, two... Cool. Very nice. 
Yeah, we could just use my money. Oh, what do we have here? Medium bombers. Yeah. I'm gonna get up there. So I need some more of this. Small arms. Reichsbach Partei der Einheit und Stücke. I've read this one before. I think I've read this one before. Establishing of the Geheimstadt Polizei. On this illustrious day, hundreds of thousands of Germans have gathered in the ages-old city of Nuremberg. One of the cities on have unquestionably marked the history of the party and will undoubtedly mark its future as well. The gathering is no mere show of political power as those outside the party <clears throat> may remark. This is now a show of strength of those of you of the German race that fought and will fight for the national socialist cause. It's a celebration for the men that still remember the days when the party was hunted by the reactionaries. It's a celebration of the old comrades in arms that have been with us since the beginning. It is evident of the sheer will and fortitude of these men that have fought for the greatness of the Reich and of the German people. But it's a big daddy himself exclaimed. But the goal must be that all loyal Germans will become the National Socialists. Only the best National Socialists are members of the party. But lest we forget, let us remember that even as we trail this new path and the, the, the force of utter dedication to Germany driving us, traitors are and always will be among us. In order to build up the new Germany, these rats must be weeded out like the parasites they are whenever and wherever they make themselves manifest. So let's build this future together for Hitler for Germany. Our new world order shall arise. Cool. 34, 34, 34. We're doing all that stuff, which is nice. Screen ships. Next one's in... Oh, 33. But then, 36. Capital ship wise, we're doing okay. 36 is the next year for that. Light aircraft. Uh, 36 is also that. Oh, we could get this one too, but I'm not really going to use fighter bombers. Interceptors. Uh, I guess that's effective, but so put up a good fight. Backbone of any air force, so. Oh, well rounders. Heavy aircraft, not super interested in medium bombers, I guess. Even after Adolf Hitler's meteoric rise of the Chancellor ship, the parties control the nation as far from absolute. Previously, the SA. <clears throat> The partisan forces, providing security Nazi rallies and disrupting our enemies' events. Well, the SA has served as well in the past. The ever-growing ambitions of the commander and Stroma begin to clash with those of the Chancellor, and Goring, Minister of President of Russia, and Hitler's right-hand man has not given us an alternative. I uh, heard this one yesterday, too. Former head of the political and intelligence departments of the Prussian police, the new Geheimstadt Polizei, less, normally known, less formally known as the Gestapo, as a more professional force than the street thugs of the SA, Lord of Hitler, and the Nazi party. The Gestapo, under the leadership of their first commander, Rudolf Diels, will root out subversive elements of Prussia and ensure the population remains Lord of Hitler and the Nazi party. Goring has already suggested Hitler and that the Gestapo be expanded to the entirety of Germany, and the Chancellor seems receptive to the idea. I'm going to put my jackboots. Reintroduce conscription. Officially abandon the restrictions of the Treaty of Versailles. Allgemein SS. SS der Fungungstruppe. Der Fungungstruppe. Fucking SS, huh? For your plan. Rhine Metal Merger. Oh, we get a partial mobilization already. Oh, crap. I'll look at mine, huh? Well, let's go with a second naval agreement with the British. Uh, the Kriegsmen is expanded at an un a rate unmatched by any navy in the world. Our tonnage has increased dramatically throughout the years. However, if we continue on our path, the British are certainly taking notice of the naval expansion. Therefore, we're treated with burn to renegotiate our allowed tonnage must be put at the forefront of our diplomatic agenda. While the British may have the most amount of capital ships in the world, they have informed us that if we continue on our na rapid naval uh, re program, any attempt to re renegotiate such a uh, navy treaty will fall on deaf ears. As such, we must make concessions at the Conference of the Royal Navy. But judging by the weak facade that the British government props us about holding back the Germans from European domination, our demands will easily be forced Th through for the Kriegsmarine, of course. For the Kriegsmarine, yeah, we want to get that one done fast. Nice. Uh, Unternehmen and Kolibri. The passage of the Enabling Act, of course, my friends. <clears throat> we solidified our control within Germany. The laws being passed in a win without any real opposition, and the subsequent silencing of opposition groups have enabled us to carry out our policies effectively. However, the paramilitary arm of the NSDAP, the SA, have proven themselves as our defined rebellious organization, with its members adhering to a perverted form of national socialism, Strasserism, who seek to fuse national socialism with corrupt Marxist beliefs. Such perverted ideologies are tolerated, especially in the highest echelons of our party as such. The SA will be purged immediately with the help of the SS. Today it will be the end of Rome's bandwagon of extremists in Operation Hummingbird. Geheim. Oh, color in effect. Execution squads will be sent out against the following conspirators. Stabschef of the Stababteilung aus Rom, Rom Reichskanzler von Schleicher, Brüning, Strasser, Beautiful. Down with the conspirators. We don't need them here. Heavy bombers? Screw it. Might as well. I'm ignoring industry, which is probably not good to do, but whatever. Hitler that prevents Rome from overthrowing the government. Look at this mo funny guy. This is both of funny guys. Look at those mustaches. Hitler nearly uh, uh, prevents Rome and Schleicher from overthrowing the government. After preventing newspapers from publishing a list of the dead on, on July 2nd, Mr. Goebbels is taken to the radio address the, to address the German public and describe how Hitler prevented SA commander Ernst Rom and former Chancellor Kurt von Schleicher from overthrowing the government and throwing the whole nation into chaos, of course. 
Previously, Rome had expressed discontent with how Hitler allied with the conservative forces of the government and corporate powers and accused him of betraying the National Socialist cause, and Schleicher has expressed nothing but contempt for Hitler upon his appointment to the Chancellery, making for strange bedfellows but agreeing that Hitler was a corrupting influence on Germany and his people. The coup attempt was stopped nearly, and the men involved have been apprehended and are facing charges of high treason against the German nation and its people. Large-scale purges are expected to occur in the SA, if not the dissolution of the whole organization altogether, with the newfound favoring of the SS. This whole event has put the nation on edge, especially Hitler who doesn't know who, who can really trust any longer, with the head of the paramilitary having revolted. Down with the conspirators! High, high, average. Rexfair is low and reforms are low, but who cares? Just keep building. Actually, this one... <clears throat> oh, land auction. 201, huh? I guess we were forced to go mobile warfare, huh? We will need some tanks, though. But we'll get there. Volunteer only, huh? What is this? Totalitarian system. Oh. Repressive system. Only hurts stability. Cool. Cooperation. Political power gain. Foreign policy. Neutrality. Isolationism. Honestly, that sounds like us right now. Five world stones. Warmonger. It's not bad. Yeah. Seeking so a slight naval agreement. Nice. Pounds gone bargain. Britain accepts. The British could never tolerate the Kaiser's attempts at naval supremacy, as any threat to the rule to the seas is also a threat to the very survival of their nation. De Fier has believed that there is no need to antagonize the UK, a fellow Aryan power preferring to pursue a naval agreement and perhaps eventually an alliance against France and the Soviet Union. After some brief setbacks, including Simon walking out early in the talks, a delegation under Joachim von Ribbentrop and Sir John Simmons' British delegation finally reached an agreement. The British have finally accepted Hitler's proposal of a 135 ratio, meaning that Kriegsmarine will be allowed to rearm and build up to 35% of the Royal Navy's tonnage, meaning the Foreign Service believed that the British would never agree to this ratio, and von Ribbentrop unexpected success as one of great favor in Berlin's halls of power and with the Fuhrer himself. <clears throat> the announcement of this treaty is enraged of French. They claim that Britain has no right to release Germany from the terms of the Versailles Treaty. Could the Allies be growing apart? Now let's review shipbuilding plans. Beautiful. Industrial research. Um, it's barely ahead of time. Ooh, get more no, steel and stuff like that. Well, let's see what else we have around here. Engineering research. Pretty fun. It's all ahead of time. Little ahead of time. They're all a little ahead of time. So we're actually right with where we need to be. So let's come back over here. Oh, let's grab that one. It's a little ahead of time, but who cares? We're Germany. The Anglo-German Naval Agreement. After we get better motorized. The Treaty of Versailles grows weaker once again on what German Führer Adolf Hitler called the happiest day of his life, the 120th anniversary of the Anglo-German victory over the French at Waterloo. Hitler has long criticized the Kaiser's old government for needlessly antagonizing the UK, with vain attempts at challenging the naval and colonial supremacy, favoring a quid pro quo where the British will continue to rule the waves while Germany dominates continent. After nearly a decade of their writing, since writing in Mein Kampf, these goals came closer to fruition today. Joachim von Ribbentrop, at the head of the British delegation, Sir John Simon, signed a treaty that allows Germany to pursue a limited naval rearmament while conceding naval dominance to the British. The fear of recognizing its necessity of naval dominance for the island nation has agreed to limit the size of the Kriegsmarine to 35% of the British Navy tonnage, allowing Germany to create a force equal to the French Marine Nationale. The treaty's announcement met without rage from the French, who claim that the UK has no legal right to release Germany from the treaty's restrictions. A great deal. And uh, Nuremberg Laws. Oh, I love it. Cold look of faction. We have the money now. Screw it. We're going to do this one first. Um, ooh. Ooh, that's not bad to do, though. That really hurt consumer goods, though. Unemployment, though. Mm -hmm. It's good. We have the money. We're going to spend it now. Light tank 34, huh? I really want medium tanks, but if we have to get light tanks for now, it's fine, too. This year's annual gathering of the National Socialist German Workers' Party in Nuremberg is the step, biggest step forward, greatest step forward, yet towards ensuring the prolonged purity and strength of the Germanic peoples. The NSDAP party leaders announced new laws really called the safety of the German state. The Aryan laws have been put in place against those who are illegally exist in Aryan people's community and who slander with their greed. They have no reason to be here, as they come from heck places that darn well where they belong, along with the fear. As Hermann Goring gave his speech, the crowd erupted into cheers multiple times. His and Hitler's words empowered the audience and provoked numerous long chants of Sieg Heil and Heil Hitler. It no need no embellishment, and the rally was an enormous success. The Nuremberg Gazettes restrict anyone classed as a Jew and strip them of their citizenship. The Blutschutz Gazettes ensures that anyone with even a slight bit of Jewish heritage is prohibited from mixing with pure Aryans. Even mixed-race Jews and Aryans can be a threat to Germans the Reich. 
and therefore under these new laws will not be allowed a citizenship. Racial infamy too has been heavily outlawed as we mustn't allow our own German brethren to procreate with Jews for the security of the Germanic race. Plans to expand these new laws have already hit gossip in the Reichstag on the, on the streets of Berlin. Elect Minister of the Interior, in coordination with the Deputy of the Fuhrer, will issue the legal and administrative orders required to implement and complete this law. With these new laws being made reality, we are on one step closer to building a true German Reich. I do want to get down here quickly though. Oh, uh, the saw rejoins the Reich! Ah, oh, beautiful. Wunderbar. Today, Germany celebrates another, another piece of their country as we join them. The Salem, which has long been part of France since the end of the Greek War, has voted to rejoin Germany. It's been a large victory for the Germans, for when they announced the results, they were met largely with enormous cheers from the Reich. Across the Reich. The International League of Nations forces made up of British, Italian, Swedish, and Dutch soldiers have started preparing to evacuate their Salem and to make way for the Germans to re-enter. The huge turnout for our unification with Germany surprised many international observers, as well as NSDAP with over 90% of the vote swinging towards returning to German rule. While most speculation has risen over the Nazi Party's campaign methods in the Tsar, it's nonetheless a victory for the German people. The plebiscite is over, and so any, so any hope of France continuing its mandate over the Tsar. It seems that the Germans have achieved a great victory, and a great victory it has been. Even though it's still demilitarized. Oh, we have also state directions here, too. That should have all the economy, just a lot, slight bit, right? Hey, back up to 13, nice. Ooh, oh, crap. I love the road network. Nuremberg? Hess? I don't get to Hess, so we can get, get all the way through here, too. I wish we could do more than one at a time. Current unemployment impact, plus 25%. Well, I mean, what are its effects? I don't really see how its effects hurt us. What is this over here? Oh, oh. Oh, unused civilian factories, 0.7. I'd rather just build. It's just better to build. Um, 100%, nice. As we build the Autobahn, we're just keep more, getting more lands and build more cities in. I love it. I love it a lot. Now we just lost $400, though. So. Whatever. We'll make up that money eventually. We're now to disarmament clauses. An ugly product of Versailles. The disarmament clauses were a series of restrictions placed on the Wehrmacht, from limiting the amount of active duty personnel to restricting on arms trades, qual weapon quality, and able production. Such clauses were made by the reactionary West to dominate German affairs and prevent us from reclaiming our destiny as the masters of Europe, hiding behind the facade of ensuring world peace and the end of conflict. While they themselves prop up their military industry to even greater heights, now that we've assured the stability in our homeland, perhaps it's time we bring our ambitions to the global stage, starting with the announcement of this ugly product of Versailles. Uh, Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium. Oh, this auto bypassed. Well, if you don't remember this one, please go ahead. Uh, okay. I mean, we already have it in... Oh, it has to be 1935 when that would take Okay, cool. Happy 35, everybody. Happy 1935. We're going places, my friends. Um, experimental research, 39, 39, no. Anything for industry? It's all very... Oh, wow. Weekly manpower, agricultural chemistry. 579 days of Is that really worth it? Probably not. Well, we'll come back to that one later if we can find anything else for 1935 that we want or need to research. All this stuff, not so much. Smut? Smutch. Um, I want to get through all the 35 stuff first. I know we're not going to... I really don't like destroyers. I'm not going to make too many of them. So, 35, 35. Oh, Panzer Flag, Bison, Panzer Jäger. Panzer Kampagen 2. Ah, 35, good. Artillery. Sehr gut. What's new and updated? Ah, mini bombers. Nice, even better bombers. I love it. I love it, Nuremberg Laws. So we'll do that one, that one, and establish the Wehrmacht. We need to have a military force as loyal to Hitler, and any loyal Aryan can join it. We, it is our great army and navy, and that which can shine with the SS and other elements of the hand on the Kriegsmarine. We can use the military force to achieve the Reich's goals, and we can use them as defense and offensive soldiers that will show our might to the world. It is even from the Reichswehr, as we have more than 100,000 men, and the best we're forced to retire on the fact that the Reichswehr is part of the weak Weimar Republic, and we need something which stands for all of Germany. We can break the chains of Versailles, and now we'll show the world our strength and might. Nice. More organization, planning speed? Yes, please. We're not really going to focus on them, though, that much, though. Because um, I want to keep going through here. Walk in the backyard. The remilitarization will be reversed if we can turn to them back down at interventionism. Huh? Stahlpakt? Südtirol is German. Yeah, that'd be nice. The Bremen incident. Germany's been disrespected internationally before, but never has such a physical act of disrespect been committed as this. As the SS Bremen was docked in the port of New York, anti-German agitators forcibly boarded the ship and tore our nation's flag down from the jack staff, and tossed it into the Hudson River while the benefactors in Washington silently observed on. A German government, of course, condemned the actions of these agitators and rightfully requested the apprehension of these involved. However, according to the U.S. authorities, no symbol of Germany was damaged as the protesters merely tore down the flag of the Nazi party. This incident is a travesty beyond words, and our international relations with the U.S. have been hampered by their insult to their national dignity. 
Uh, the German government has been forced to remove the imperial German flag as a co-national flag to prevent an incident like this from occurring again, an understandable measure, but one that shouldn't have been needed. Hope that the German Americans find it in their heart to reject the anti-Germanic propaganda propagated by these agitators, and we hope that the U.S. government will find itself within themselves to change their tone to us in the, in the near future. As the Bible teaches, forgiveness is a virtue. The party flag we use is our official state flag. Hey, look at that. See, we're not censored here. Not censored, and especially on this channel, I try to not censor myself too much, except with bad words. Usually. Nuremberg Law is enacted. This year is an annual gathering at the National Socialist German Workers' Party Nuremberg, so the biggest step forward. Oh. Uh, a lot of this is all just from the uh, focus itself, so. Long the other Germanic people. Oh, uh, I have racial theories. We, lose, we get quite a bit more political power. We lose 10% of the recruitable population and 5% of consumer goods, which sucks. And we get totalitarian system again. Okay. Welcome to the backyard. Oh, uh, we have enough. We don't have enough manpower in the field yet. Because we are lacking a lot of support equipment, which sucks. The coal cattle pack is signed, huh? Alright then. We'll do that for now, if we have to. Uh, yeah, we're, we're lacking a few things here. Are we we're really lacking too much? Not too much. So we should be good with that. I'll get mine SS. I'm going to wait for all that stuff a little later. For your plan. For decades, we've allowed unchecked control of our economy, believing in the prosperity of free markets will give us a towards the population. Time and time again, we've seen that it does not actually bring prosperity to the masses. Rather, it brings prosperity to the wealthy oligarchs to exploit said masses to do their bidding. As such, an act of economic exploitation can no longer be tolerated within the Reich. As such, we should create the four-year plan. An economic plan that is all stakeholders of our economy shall follow or face a severe repercussions. It calls for autarky or self-sufficiency. Believe that the free trade merely empowers the wealthiest of economies, while the poorest of the bunch is no match for the foreign competitors, and that to liberate ourselves from such influence, we must be, be able to provide for ourselves. Um, it also believes in protectionist policies further distancing our economy from the free market. A truly respectful hero. MFO bills are due. Well, if oh, we got so much political power, I don't mind you mean taxing a little bit more if you need to. Current balance plus 18. Nice. Very good. With the amount of consumer goods we're building, because we don't need to build some more millies too. Honestly, at this point, I might just start building up at least one. Build at least one line for now. It costs more money for us, but honestly, like, we kind of need it. Oh, this one's almost done too. Nice. 25% unemployment. Not bad. I does hurt consume construction speed and civilian factory use, but whatever. Plenty of light cruisers, but where are our heavy cruisers? Honestly, go down to go to go to one. We need to build up these other ships too. I don't want too many carriers. Ah, Germany reintroduces conscription. Today, the German Reich has done the unthinkable. They have cast out the shackles of Versailles and have announced that they consider themselves free of the restrictions placed upon them after the Great War. Following this announcement, the German Reich has reintroduced conscription in the nation and most likely already begun the development of new tanks, airplanes, and warships. After 26 years of being stuck under the regulations imposed by Versailles, Germans are now openly celebrating the freedom that they have gained now that they have shrugged off the Western power's restrictions. A forum. Experts predict that even after this move, Germany shall continue to grow as a threat. Yet other international observers have disregarded those claims as they point out that Germans are so politically confined to the land that they currently possess. No matter if you see the shocking announcement uh, made as a good omen or a bad moon rising, you cannot deny that the, good, the, the choice that NSDAP has made could lead to dangerous consequences. The world waits for the next action that the Fuhrer chooses to take. An, increase, an increasingly an interesting development, to be sure. When you mandatory service. So right now, what are we on? We're a volunteer only. So it's going to really start hurting us when we get a three-year mandatory service. Service by requirement is going to hurt a lot. So we're scraping the barrel. Remove Treaty of Versailles, secret rearmament. Oh! Okay, so minus 40% recoupable population factor. We get 5% consumer goods, better 50% training time. Daily command power gains goes way up. Military factory construction speed goes up. Nice! Nice, we're mobilizing more. Good. Welcome to the backyard. Not quite. Uh, KDF Wagen. Change this. Add right. Expect a home going, which grants unlocks decisions. I like decisions. Ah, mineral discovery, good. We only want the best of the best. Um, so we were on artillery, we were going through all that stuff. Rocket artillery sounds like fun too. 
36, not quite. More recon for the recon. What is this one? You need radio broadcasting, huh? Special forces, not quite. 35, yes. Yes, Cedric. Ah. Frankfurt on mine. Beautiful, my friends. Contrary to our fear's vision, we found it necessary to establish a state-owned steel company headed by Herman Goring himself. Allow us to hasten growth in ore mining and extract and process ore from a viable Salzgitter that have been thought uneconomical by private companies with little vision, of course. Establishing this company will allow us to absorb heavy industries from conquered nations. We'll provide Goring with unchecked access to state financing so we can create a large conglomerate, providing us with steel and other strategic resources. The good Hitler years. Conrad had never been one to regard a holiday as one of his life goals. He simply didn't have the time being occupied with his firm, party work, and most importantly, his family. So dreams of luxuries never crossed his mind, surely. He often dreamt of a truck, doing some renovations in the, to the house or a new tobacco pipe, things that his mind had had a tangible and immediate use. A truck would make their deliveries easier, the renovations would make the house the pride of the neighborhood, and the tobacco pipe would also replace his old one. What immediate use would a holiday have? It would all be over in just two weeks, and he never had any interest in visiting foreign places, so in the end, the money would be wasted and gain nothing from it. But when he saw the poster reading Holiday on the Board of the De Deutsche, Hamburg, uh, Nepal, Palmero, Bari, Venice, two and a half Reichsmarks per day per person, <coughs> he suddenly yearned for sudden relaxation. He had some concern about the price since it was all a large amount of money, but with the companies reopening the city and his increasing income, it was well within his possibilities. His children were either grown up and Anton, his youngest, spent most of his time in school on the Hitler Youth, anyways. The farm would certainly survive two weeks without him, so during Mass, he wondered. Why not? Surely he and his wife deserved it, and it would be the nice sign for her, showing her that the poverty and turmoil of the Weimar years were over. So, the next Friday, he made a small detour during his usual deliveries to the city, going to the local KDF office and buying two tickets, hoping that his wife would be thrilled as he was. And thrilled she was, crying tears of joy when he presented her with the tickets. And so the two of them would go on holiday for the first time in their life. Now, three months, he, uh, he lay beside his wife on the beach, smiling to himself and thinking his past self for taking the time to read the poster on his way to church. He closed his eyes again and fell asleep with a smile on his face. The sun has shined. Der ein neuer Tag im Paradise. Nice. KDF Wagen. In countries like the U.S., cars have been accessible for the general public for a long time now. Even though our car designs have always been spear, the Curse Treaty of Versailles and the incompetent Weimar Republic were unable to get these great vehicles in the hands of our people. But fortunately, with Adolf Hitler taking over, these uh, those days are gone. On the order of the Fuhrer, the Volkswagen AG was created to provide the people with such a car. They'll be able to drive at least 100 kilometers per hour, have four seats, and cost under 1,000 Reichsmarks. You know to realize this? The DAF has been tasked with building the biggest car factory in Europe, the Gazoo Vor MBH. The new and affordable cars that are going to be produced in this factory will carry all the names Volkswagen and will be designed by the Porsche. Uh, to guarantee the highest quality, as a German people deserve nothing less. And I know we're making almost 20 Reichsmarks, or dollars a day. Ryan Metal uh, Merger, get two uh, millis, go to partial mobilization, um, lose money, output, oh, dissolve stuff. Uh, Ryan Metal Merger. A senior enterprise, Ryan Metal AG, plays an important role in the armament of the Wehrmacht, and its various branches will continue to assist our rapidly growing economy. Take full advantage of this potential, both military and economically. It would be prudent for us to extend our control over the company by placing it under the administration of Hermann Goring's Reichswerke. The conglomerate experience, is experiencing rapid growth, and the acquisition of Ryan Metal will surely increase its effectiveness and give Germany a greater chance of defeating its enemies. But, Contrary to our first vision, we have found it necessary to establish a state-owned steel company headed by Goring himself. It also allows a hasten growth in ore mining and extract and process ores from the valuable Salzgitter uh, uh, that has been thought an economical for private companies with little vision, of course. It allows to absorb heavy industry with con conquered nations, for Goring with unchecked access, monthly maintenance costs of the uh, Reichswerke and its industrial assets 0%, resource extraction efficiency, output of military branch, exploit stewards and Lloyd's technology. Germany is in the midst of one of the world's rapid remill armaments ever seen in history, bringing an army up to size with other great powers that surround us. However, to do so, we must have an abundance of steel, and before now, it had to be created from the iron of high quality, which isn't in the abundance needed in Germany to fuel rapid armament programs and public works initiatives. Low quality crude iron, however, is in abundance, we just can't utilize the reserves that we have. A company in the UK by the name of Stewart's and Lloyd's has discovered a method of making Bessemer converters extremely cheap, uh, turning what was used as crude iron into steel that we can forge our entire army out of. We can't waste time discovering this technology ourselves. We must seize the knowledge from the company now and reap the massive benefits on the steel production that comes from them. If it is not the most honorable thing that we must do to ensure our nations rise, but we shall not sacrifice such an opportunity over the petty pride. We must act now. Open Gauss sits at mines. In order to keep up with industrial demand, we must start constructing and creating more iron mines across Germany. Steel is needed for panzers, rifles, weapons, cars, and such other vehicles, as well as any civilian projects needing the precious metal. Luckily, there is one such location that could give us access to large amounts of iron, in Salzgitter, Saxony, and uh, Wolfenbüttel. There are huge reserves of iron. If we were to construct the required infrastructure and set up a steel mine, we could reap the benefits of such a fountain of industry and have ample resources for any industrial projects with tons left to off spare. We have heard that the iron in Salzgitter is of low quality, and this could lead to problems in the future, however. The fact of the matter is that the steel could 
to save Germany. What is needed for assembly lines shall go to the assembly lines, no matter what quality it is. The mine and cell gets us shall open to give us access to the sheer amount of material. We lose 250 cash. Uh, maintenance goes up. We get time for production and another civvy, which won't pay for itself, but I think that's worth it. Expand it. <coughs> Ooh. You lose a little bit more money. Uh, you organize the racks back up. Output of the military branch is reset. Reorganize the racks back up. What? We don't need that one. Increase funding for metal back. Uh, the recently opening cell gets to mines have so far been a satisfying success with a truly staggering amount of iron mine of the region being shipped to factories in Germany every single day. This amount, no matter how incredible it may be, is still not enough to completely fulfill the goals of the four-year plan and the increasing demands of the armament companies. We'll thus invest even more money in the cell gets to mines in order to access the additional mine deposits, which so far cannot have been accessed by our miners. <clears throat> and now we're broke. Oh, there's more money. Maintenance goes up even more. But get another civvy in addition to that one. What's not to love? The sheer amount of iron ore that we're extracting from the cell gets our region is incredible. But to make the best use of those resources, we must construct a massive metalworking factory nearby. This factory shall be known as the Stahlwerke Braunschweig plant. Not, will not only make the metal available to, for our use in a huge rearmament program for the Wehrmacht, but also provide thousands of jobs for the German people, which will help boost the economy, something that will be undeniably helpful when we go to war with the Western democracies. But we also want to keep an eye on uh, the Autobahn, because we will need to spend 200 monies there too. But 20 every week or month or whatever it is, is very nice. Um, nice, pretty good. It is almost 1936 at this point. I don't think there's very much left for us to do. Can we do this one? No. We need other technology first. So we're going to get a 1936. Come on, get more research speed, right? Exactly. Nice. Ooh, now we definitely, oh my god, we definitely do need more steel. Let me fill bills are due. Costing us a lot of political power. Um, let's create public works. Mm -hmm. What else can we do with political power? Rogan of the Reichsvaka. Increase funding for Medevaka. Global Nations, propaganda, political actions, country factions. From Spearmark don't like us. Hardliners do kind of, you know, they're all kind of low for us. KDF Wagen. Um, we lose political power, which is fine with us. We lose 100 money, though, which is not good. Even though we do have it, so we must well spend it. As much as I do this one, because I, I, I we need more steel and stuff like that, we still need to keep continue expanding. Uh, in the meantime, where are the resources here? Over here would be nice. We're not quite there yet, though. Uh, over here, we do have a little bit, so we might as well do hunt over next. And there goes our money. Increased funding for Middleback. Safe from aerial bombardment, the middle of like essential works is an underground factory that we have constructed. The sole purpose is to assemble missiles, flying bombs, and other pieces of weaponry that have a devastating effect on the enemy. We'll, we'll fund it. The factory is meeting its production quotas and naturally. The Reichsvaka wants to see how much better it can get. To allow the middle of the factory the ability to fulfill its potential and continue supplying the Wehrmacht with high quality weapons, Hemming Goring's conglomerate will provide us extra funding. Which we don't need immediately yet. So. Oh, we made a carrier. Look at that. Look at dang. Wait. Anti aircraft gun. Do we already do this one? Thirty-five. There you go. Nice. Average kit thirty-five. Nice. Very good. Uh, industrial research thirty-six. Report speed. That wouldn't be bad. Armored trains probably don't really need them, but you never know. There's nothing for industry here, so we're just going to go ahead and do radar then. Not in our backyard. We need more divisions, but I wish we could, like, send volunteers. Bruh. Bruh. Uh, we have to be war for that one. Dissolve small corporations. While developing a rights economy at new levels, we've discovered a liability in our expansion. The smaller companies in our nation have slowed down our growth and collectively taken away resources from the larger corporations. They cannot be allowed to continue. A law is being drawn up to dissolve these companies and take away the materials that are distributed among the larger enterprises of the Reich. The bar for liquidation is 40,000 Reichsmarks, and any who protest a new ruling may find themselves in a less comfortable environment than their homes. Furthermore, the creation of new businesses in the German shall have the starting capital of 200,000 Reichsmarks. While these new codes may seem unfair, this is what needs to be done to secure a nation's rapid economic growth without our companies falling down on us. Happy 1936, everybody. I'm probably going to be missing a few things here um, before we can really get to all this stuff. Railway guns are nice. Uh, better planes, yes. 
build, build, build. And when you're done building, build more. Eight and a half percent is economic uh, unemployment. Is that all? Because I, I do see these guys, and these guys aren't super happy with us. So average, 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 low, high, whatever it is. So. And we do need more divisions here, too. West Wall. Support the KMT government. Road to War. Hyman Likes. Reorganize Abwehr. Um, I don't want to cost us too much more anyways right now, too. But hey, with the rearmament going faster than we had ever imagined, uh, we must now decide upon which direction the new Baramach should take. Should we build up and improve what was learned on the Valkyrie? Could our successes in the Kaiserschlag be a prime indicator of how we should fight in the modern war? Or should we listen to the new ideas of Generals Guderian and Lutz, who think that the Panzer uh, is the future and the key to revolutionizing modern warfare, emphasizing speed and mobility? Well, we have no tanks. We will have tanks soon enough. Ah, 200. Current balance plus 13 is not bad. Good. Because <coughs> the Panzerwaffe, we get first, second, and third Panzer divisions we've mobilized, which would be very nice. Uh, Ethiopian Empire is gone. Oh, research laboratories. Cool, 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 cool. Six medium bombers, naval bombers, heavy bombers. I personally prefer attack aircraft. What is this? I mean, bills are due soon, whatever. Um, the Kriegsmarine? The Luftwaffe. Well, air warfare was not the, that important in the Valkyrie. With new plane models growing bigger and deadlier every year, all evidence suggests that it will play a crucial role in the wars to come. That's why a reorganization of a young, albeit a rapidly growing air force, the Luftwaffe, is solely needed. Ah. Uh, until now, the main focus was to build up a stable air force without following a certain direction, but now, since we have reached our respectable size and the war is approaching, greater and bolder steps must be taken. We must begin to build aircraft more efficiently with more aim. Only with a well-organized and battle-ready Luftwaffe will have what it takes to gain dominance in the skies. <clears throat> the Hindenburg flew in the sky for the first time today. A shining example of the Reich. Onlookers. Marble, the largest airship to ever launch, flew gracefully over them. On it, in bold letters, set the current identification number DLZ129, while rather bland, a name that's already been decided on. Hindenburg, posthumously named to the renowned Field Marshal and the President of the German Rome. Today, untoted as the safest airship in the sky, is a proud example of progress in the Reich. And uh, opening of the Berlin Olympics. The much anticipated opening ceremony for the Berlin Olympics took place today, marking the official start of the Games. Thousands of the spectators gathered in the Olympic Stadium to witness a spectacle which included a parade of athletes from over 50 countries, as well as performances from local musicians and dancers. The ceremony was presided over by the German Chancellor Adolf Hitler, who gave a short speech before declaring the Games officially open. The Olympic Games and flame was lit by the athlete Fritz Schilgen to, to, to the cheers of the crowd. Let the Games begin, the Kriegsmarine as well. Over 20 years ago, the German fleet was the pride of our nation. We have the biggest and strongest ships and an expensive home and a colonial fleet that was able to pose a real danger to, to the Royal Navy. But due to our losses in the Valkyrie and the crippling Treaty of Versailles, our fleet is far cry from what it used to be. It's time to change that. Since the rearmament began, our fleet has been growing steadily as well. But the real expansion of the Kriegsmarine has just begun. Many of our admirals, such as Akreda, a dream of a grand German armada, one day eclipsing established fleets such as the Royal Navy or the U.S. Navy. While the such as called Dunas seek more practical and want to work and improve on what we have, leaving wild dreams of future plans for tomorrow. Choosing one of these paths will be crucial, but building up our fleet will be no easy task and take a lot of time and resources. In the end, though, we will have what we use, want to use to, to and go even beyond that to make the Korean Marine the greatest fleet in the world. Radio broadcasting. Beautiful. Because we definitely need that. Uh, 36. Anything here? No. 36. Marines. Uh, Marines would be nice. I want to just, like, pair drop on enemies. That's very historical, though. <coughs> and I'm not really sure what a good template is for this uh, type of campaign, so we'll see. Oh, tanks probably first, right? Yes. <coughs> End of the Olympics. The 1936 Olympics just came to a close today. With a closing ceremony that was just as impressive uh, as the opening ceremony, the two weeks of comp competitions saw athletes from around the world competing in a wide range of events, including track and field, swimming, and gymnastics. The final day of the Games featured the marathon, which was won by the Italian athlete Simeon Mario de Pra. The closing ceremony also included a parade of athletes, as well as a performance by the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. <coughs> The 1936 Berlin Olympics were a resounding success, with any, many athletes settling new world records and winning over gold medals for the countries. Despite the political overturn of the games, the athletes were able to put aside their differences and compete in the spirit of the sportsmanship and fair play. The 1936 of a, uh, Berlin Olympics will be remembered as one of the most exciting and competitive Olympics events in history. Long live the Olympic heroes! Frick, huh? Frick is very good. Um, uh, Neurath is okay. Hess is, well, he's okay too. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a lot of cough. Huh. Yeah. Spare. Oh, Spare. Oh, money income. Oh, that guy's not bad. 
stay the Jimin here. Honestly, as much as I like Hess, we need need, need him. But consumer goods. Oh my god. Happy amateur. Huh. With a fierce plans uh, for Realm having been a resounding success, once again giving the German people a foothold on Europe. Once again, a time has come to decide the future of our nation, our armed forces, and perhaps the future of the Reich in the conflicts to come. Many proposals have been put forth by us or for us, but perhaps the most interesting of them, Guderian's advocacy for the use of armor motorized units, that together could rush Schwerpunkt or points of attack, with due support, penetrate any enemy's resistance, and the general's own words, kick rather than splatter, splatter them and thus create further opportunities to exploit the enemy's weaknesses with maneuverability. More democratic elements of the staff have decided to propose this with a series of reforms that the Herr should go through in order to avoid the absolute necessary bloodshed of German troops on the battlefields, including reliance on artillery. This shall work alongside the set of tactics proposed by General Erwin Rommel, and thus employing deep penetration tactics to stealth and surprise to overwhelm the enemy. Listen to Guderian. And the Kriegsmarine, too. Ah, so good. 36 special forces, we'll get there later. later. Intelligence gained from combat, huh? Sure, why not? Build, build, build. We need way more fighters and attack aircraft. Way, 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 way more. Ah. Nice. Oh, this place has a lot of steel? No. Ah, up, up here it does. Chair. Oh, we can't build it yet, god dang it. It's fine. Um. Ruins of Reichswerke. We didn't read that one yet. Ooh, infantry. Ooh, armor. We have no armor though right now. So we we'll go with this one probably. <coughs> but we want to get the armor out so we can use them for the, the you know, Spanish Civil War. During the first Valkyrie, there was nothing more annoying to a commander than a slow, almost snail like movement of troops and weapons across the front lines. However, almost 20 years later, things have changed. With the introduction of new doctrines and technologies, warpers become more efficient, more capable, more bloody. In the spirit of warper, we must update the hair. With his new command, the Panzerwaffe. The Panzerwaffe shall compose of Panzer Troopen and Panzer Grenadiers, who shall be used to steamroll our enemies and to create a truly efficient war machine. Ah. Did you read this one? Yeah. We're gonna be almost out of all sorts of money. But another city is nice. Um, the Rexbecker conglomerate, headed by Hermann Goring, is one of the largest corporations in the world and has been incredibly effective these past few years in arming the uh, Wehrmacht and strengthening the German economy. However, due to the sheer size of the organization, it's become inefficient. This inefficiency, combined with poor resource allocation and the low prices at which the war material has been sold, resulted in the organization operating at a loss. To remedy the situation, the Reichsbecker must be streamlined, and a massive restructuring of its composition must be undertaken. The most important part of this process will be the organization of the various assets into three blocks. Block A will be consisting of assets related to coal, iron, and steel. Block B will be made of weapons and munitions related holdings. While Block C will compose of river and rail transportation resources, hopefully. By organizing the vast number of assets controlled by the Reichsbecker into these blocks, it will begin to make money once again and continue to serve the interests of the Germans, Germany with distinction. Nice. Um. We don't need more steel, goddamn it. We could do that, but I'm not really sure if it's because monthly maintenance goes down, but that output of the military branch goes down as well, so. This one, we'll probably do that one eventually too once we get enough money. Money is not an issue right now, but I have a feeling it's going to be an issue later on. Not gonna lie. High, low, low, high, average. Shoot stuff, well, oh, now the Wehrmacht is average. Nice. But yeah, I do want the Panzer Panzer, just in case, fast, j fast enough. Uh, we're gonna go battlefield support, definitely battlefield support. I don't know why we wouldn't go that direction. Ah, there we go. Spanish military bolts. Spain plunges to war. That's actually really cool. <coughs> Dark news has come from the Iberian Peninsula. General Emilio Mola, the chief organizer and comrade of the Spanish Republican Armed Forces, and General Jose Janjuro, who served as a symbolic leader today, announced an up and uprising against the wildly unpopular Republican government. Numerous conservative organizations like the CEDA, Monarchism, including the rival Alfonsis, and the religiously conservative Carlists, as well as a fascist Falange Española de las Jones, supported, supported the nationalist movement. The armies, a reduced funding which made it more and more dissatisfied with the government, was the root of this uprising. In Pamplona, Burgos, Zaragoza, Valladolid, Cadiz, Cordoba, Sevilla, and Spanish Morocco, also the rise of military formations in support of the coup. Although this result is not unexpected, given how visible the political arrest is gone, though, not predictable. So, what can we do about this? Because if we can't send volunteers, that, this, is not, this is not good. This is not good. Country factions? Oh. Political actions, or improve working conditions, hurts us, but gives us more stability. I kind of like that, I and mean, we have time for that now. Anyways, formable nations, Reichs Auto Bon. Oh, minus 0.5, that's really bad. Oh, Spain request export. Condor Legion will be in task. There you go. It's not worth the time. Yes. Can, do we, can, can we get directly involved, please? I 
want to get involved, please let her get involved. Request advisors, don't bother. Send him to generals. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Two, only two divisions. God dang it, that's not enough. Um, these are just... I don't see how these infantry divisions serve. as These cavalry divisions are okay. I don't really want to send them, though. Um, I, I want to send tanks. I want to send tanks. God dang it. Maybe we'll send more later on. It's right. They have no commander. It's okay. We didn't need a commander, right? Uh, 100. We're going to send one plane. So we're going to send fighters. We don't have enough. God dang it. Um, you guys are interceptors, which I never use. We could try it. Because right now, logistically speaking, I want army to be superior. Navy goes low. You go medium. I'm not sure this is going to be any good when we get some actual cast out. That might be better. So, uh, oh, yeah, and we do have the carrier, which is nice, even though we have no planes. Oh, should have made some planes. I'm not even going to send them out to the ships yet, then. Um, fighters. Anything else we have here? Interceptors, naval bombers. It's nice. Crane. Cool. Ah! Uh, how many more days do we have for this one? 62. Eh, we might have enough. Go do them anyways. Very communication. Reconnaissance? Sure. Alright, so you guys are down here. You're all alone. You're like, what the heck is going on? Castle holding? See what you can do. Bills are due. Issue your currency. We're good. Ah. We can get more money that way too, but no, we're going to keep building. Oh, we get a bonus to uh, military complexes now, too. That's 36. We have one line already going. Actually, I might get a line of ships going as well. They they, they canceled an aggression. Poland. Poland, what are you doing? Maybe help out here. Does it help out that much? Cool. Just told you to go ahead. Panzerwaffe. Right, it's a little bit late to throw them in there, but whatever. Get Marshals, Mobile Warfare Doctrine, Kriegsmarine. Uh, I read the one earlier, might as well. Um, what's next? Ready to be a war for that one, can't. Ooh, we just one. The Rhineland, heart of the Industrialized Reich, has been a demilitarized zone ever since the Treaty of Versailles has been ratified. It created out of the fear of an inevitable invasion by our glorious armies. It remains as a testament to the empires of old meddling in the affairs of the emerging powers in Europe. However, their influence is waning, along with a handful of awful diplomatic decisions and the willingness of everlasting peace. Due to these contributing factors, it's high time that we remilitarize the Rhineland region. Not only to assert our sovereignty, but also show the, ra the rapidly advancing power and might of the thousand year old Reich. And the Allies react with military force, and we simply back down. However, their blind faith in everlasting peace show that they would do anything to ensure its longevity, including appeasing our ambitions in Europe. Maybe reverse if you're confronted and back down. That is something we must take, though. Ah, ah Panzers. I, you know, maybe it's not a good idea to send them to Obest. Remote. I think Heinz Guderian deserves to get a little higher. Peter. Peter Peters. I love Obest Peter Peters. <laughs> So this template is interesting. Light tanks, like the Panzer, with motorized battalions, anti-tank, fast artillery. <clears throat> like I said in the last episode, please let me know in the comments below what you think would be uh, the best in terms of, uh, you know, actually making divisions and templates and stuff like that. So good. Well, that crew has been passed by. Nice. Any other good marshals? Bum blum bug? Sure, why not? For now. Unyielding defender. I guess you can have that one. Uh, fighter bombers. I really don't want these carrier born fighters. Yeah, I guess we do have a carrier. Attack aircraft. Better attack aircraft, yes. <coughs> Dude. Italy. It's not even a Spanish unit. Italy got frickin' encircled. Bruh. Not looking good for the Spanish date. One v one. How would you fare? Well, I guess it's two v one now. Break them out. Kriegsmarine, yay! 
I mean, at midnight. When the meeting was finally nearing its end, it felt like it had already spent an eternity in the small coffin of a meeting room together with the other two unfortunate souls who had played the part in perhaps the biggest gamble of German history. They both had argued against a step for hours, citing military statistics, graphics, maps, and everything but in the end. It seemed that they understood that their advice was spoken into the wild. Nevertheless, they mounted on the final attack, one last hope att hopeless attempt to subvert the coming catastrophe or at least keep their hands clean. With all due respect, I can only repeat myself, marching into the Rhineland in a current position is almost hopeless. Our military is weak, and the French know this. They would just move in and occupy the Rhineland again. This time for good. No treaties, diplomatic negotiations, or demilitarization, just occupation, and perhaps even annexation. It's a risk we just can't take. We must either wait and rebuild up our forces ever even more, or we could always try to negotiate with militarization. I agree, we should at least try to negotiate for provoking the French in such a bold. Meine Herren, I appreciate your concern, but we all know that the French won't even try to reach an agreement with us. The future belongs to those who seize it, and I have no intention of sitting in Berlin, doing nothing while the world takes us over. The Rhineland must be remilitarized, and Germany must fulfill its destiny no matter the concerns. Blumberg? Yes? How long would it take to move the units you mentioned in the Rhineland? About three days. Good. Prepare the Minimarsch. Frisch? Yes. You hope of ex uh, minister Blumberg in any way you can, is that clear? Yeah, but my fear, what will we do when the French cross the border? We will retreat and hope that they stop the Rhine. I, Elia, Yakta, Est. At least we saved them. Now, 2v1. Can we do anything there? Because they do want to circle us up here, too. We have found some enemy planes. I don't think we can send any of the planes camp here, can we? Dang, we can't. Darn it. Alright, there's a very real possibility we're going to get circled ourselves here, which is stupid. Let's go there. Salamanca. Come on. Come on. Ah! Oh, the USSR soldiers are there. Interesting. That's a count blocking two. It's gross tractor. A heavy... Oh, that's a medium tank. Interesting. One second, a minute. Venta Obum. Articles 42, 43, and 44 of the unjustly treaty of Versailles forbidden us from remilitarizing the Rhineland in the name of peace. In reality, the provisions of the sham treaty of Versailles <clears throat> were created as a means of keeping Germany down and ensuring that they can never challenge a despotic rule of France and the Jewish puppet masters over all of Europe. Currently, the French government has making overtures to the Judeo-Bolshevik tyrants of the Soviet Union and is evident by the Franco-Soviet Pact of 1935. This included an effort to prepare for an invasion of the fatherland that will result in its ultimate destruction if not stopped. By remilitarizing the Rhineland, we will show our determination to not only defend ourselves against Franco-Soviet encirclement, but also take efforts to break free of the chains that have been imposed upon the fatherland by our enemies. Go ahead with the operation. And just in case we'll save. At least we got out of that pickle a little bit. Ah. Reichspag, right? Reichspartei Tag der Era. Um... On this beautiful day, the German people have gathered again in the famous city of Nuremberg. The people of Germany have been summoned to witness our glorious fear of speaking name in this year's party congress, named the Rally of Honor. The gathering is a gathering where we show the strength and honor of the Nazi party. As the Führer himself said, the Rhine Pact of Locarno has lost its inherent meaning and ceased, in a, in a practical sense, to exist. As a consequence, Germany no longer feels itself as bound for its part to the Slavs Pact. The German government is now compelled to react to this new situation created by this alliance, a situation aggravated by the fact that the Franco-Soviet agreement has been supplanted by a treaty of alliances between Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union, with arrangements which are exactly parallel, and their interest of the primal right of the people to safeguard its borders and maintain its possibilities of defense. The German Reich government has today reestablished a full unlimited sovereignty of the Reich in the demilitarized zone of the Rhineland. Glory to the Reich and reconnaissance support. French troops congregating on the border. Reconnaissance support, Unternehmen, Vinte Obon, Anderson, Aachen, Infantry Regiment, 2311 Infantry Division, 432, first reports of French troops moving near the border, made by Gefreiter, Joachim of the Second, Nachrichten, Rechtenzug. 5 o'clock, HQ alarmed a possible French attack. HQ orders increased combat readiness and avoid engagement. 518, further reports of contact and sightings of French troops near the border, made by 1st Infantry, uh, Company, the 2nd Reiter Troop, and 4th MG Company, 518 to 820. Continuing reports of increasing French movement uh, made by almost all combat units and increased combat readiness. 820. Stabsgefreiter Kleiner reports motor sounds, suspected sources, tanks, trucks, or trains in larger numbers. 10 to 20. Uh, reports unconfirmed, reconnaissance underway. Let's continue operation. Our troops will guard gifts on the island, but the operation shall continue as planned. That's going too far. German troops enter the Rhineland. 
For years, one of the most humiliating and destructive points of the Versailles Treaty has been the demilitarization of the Rhineland, forbidding our soldiers from entering the area and thus robbing us of the right to defend our western border, which during the occupation of the war by the French caused many grievances for Germany and its people. But now, thanks to the new strength and wise guidance from our big daddy, this shameful part of the Versailles has finally been overcome today three battalions of German soldiers marched in Aachen, Trier, and Saarbrücken, where they immediately got to work at construction garrisons and preparing themselves for potential French aggression. This determinant has been... Uh, has been widely welcomed both Germany as a whole and the Rhineland, where the people are relieved to once again be under the protection of our brave soldiers, perhaps most decisively shown by the sheer size of the crowds, which cheer on our soldiers and their march throughout the cities. <coughs> this day will truly live on as a historic day in German history and the start of our journey towards the reunification of all Germans throughout Europe and a single Reich. Our honor has been restored. Beautiful. World tension drastically increases. Get a corn open my lady. Nice. Walk in our backyard. Oh, we just auto completed. Oh, god dang. Well, my anti-comet impact. West Wall. That's not bad. The Road to War. It's about the KMT government. Abandoned by the West, betrayed by the Allies, divided over ideology, China it was much like us in the early days of the, after the Great War, with the major difference being that they haven't recovered. They remain divided between the nationalists, communists, and the numerous of the military cliques across the country. Without any outside support, the KMT will wallow in the pit they're stuck in, unable to deal with the treacherous, traitorous officers. Uh... Uh, and ghastly communists. <clears throat> this is where Germany comes in. We sent a military mission under the command of General Alexander Valkenhausen. With the aim of training Chiang Kai-shek's forces at Wampoa and to equip their army with German equipment, we could save the Chinese from themselves and gain an ally in the process. This path will get us a foot in the door to the Asian influence and with a powerful ally in Asia who could stand in the way of us. Drama mediation. So we have definitely done one eventually. And then uh, West Wall. The road to war. Seeing that the Western powers and the bullets fix the force their hand and continue to agitate the new Germany, it's become apparent that another great European war is inevitable. To ensure that we will be victorious in this war and that the disaster of the Great War and the Weimar Republic doesn't repeat itself, it has become necessary to start healing and beating the drums of war and finally embark on the road to war. War plans will be created, soldiers will be trained, guns will be produced, and the populace will be made ready to resist any foe until the last man and the last bullet. We live in a truly historic age, which will undoubtedly determine the future of Germany for years to come, and if we want to ensure that Germany shall finally regain its position as a world power, no mistakes can be made in this crucial step towards greatness. But we're going to end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will continue with the Spanish Civil War and making Germany great. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.